ഫോർസൺ ബെൻഡിംഗ് മൊമെന്റ് റൈറ്റ് സോ ഷിയർ ഫോർസൺ ബെൻഡിംഗ് മൊമെന്റ് so before knowing what is shear force what is bending moment what is shear force diagram what is bending moment diagram why we have to draw shear force diagram why we have to draw bending moment diagram etc etc first we should understand the basic types of supports what kind of supports we may use in beams because while drawing sfd and bmd we require to know what kind of reactions may induce about different kinds of supports so let us start with this topic types of supports types of supports so all of you may write down types of supports types of supports so here i am drawing a beam a simply supported beam a simply supported beam left support is pin jointed support or hinged support right support is roller support or knife edge support so here i may write this is a and this is b right so support a is hinged support hinged support or <coughs> pin jointed support or pin jointed support pin jointed support on support base roller support roller support or knife edge support knife edge support knife edge support so from this diagram from this beam we are going to understand two types of supports one support is uh, hinged support and second support is roller support so what hinged support do or how many degrees of freedom hinged support resist or how many displacements hinged support may resist so hinged support resist two displacements so hinged support resist displacement of beam parallel to length of beam that means a beam is like this a beam wants to displace like this hinged support will not allow it hinged support will resist it so about hinged support the beam cannot have displacement parallel to length of beam not only this hinged support resist displacement of beam perpendicular to length of beam also right so hinged support resist two displacements displacement of beam parallel to length displacement of beam perpendicular to length since it is resisting two displacements two reactions will induce we all are, we are no man because of force linear displacement will come because of force linear displacement will come because of turning moment angular displacement will come when you resist linear displacement reactive force will induce because of force displacement is coming when you resist displacement reactive force will come so hinged support resist two displacements that is why two reactions will induce right so one reaction one reaction perpendicular to length of the beam and another reaction parallel to length of the beam like this two reactions will induce about hinged support right so all of you may write like this first you copy this diagram right you copy this diagram then i dictate few points so a is hinged support or pin jointed support b is roller support or knife edge support like that first you draw this then clearly write this then indicate two reactions like this then write maximum number of unknown reactions maximum number of unknown reactions about hinged support maximum number of unknown reactions about hinged support is 
maximum number of unknown reactions above hinged support is 2. It need not be always 2 man. For example, if, the, if this beam carries only vertical force, maybe a force P is acting here. Since the action is only downward, reactions only will be upward. So this reaction will not induce because beam is not carrying any force parallel to length of beam. Okay. If beam carries only vertical load here, only this reaction will induce. If beam carries a force like this, maybe this is P1, maybe this is P2, right? Now, this P2 may have two components, horizontal component, vertical component. Horizontal component of P2 will try to move beam towards left and hinged support will resist it. So consequently, a reaction will induce about hinged support like this. Okay. If beam carries only transverse load, only one reaction. A beam carries transverse load and axial load, there shall be two reactions about hinged support. So always it need not be two. Sometimes it is two, sometimes only one. Now let us come to roller support. Right? Roller support resist displacement of beam perpendicular to length of beam. Or roller support resist transverse displacement of beam. Transverse means perpendicular to length. Roller support resist transverse displacement or lateral displacement of beam. Since it is resisting lateral displacement or transverse displacement, a reaction will induce about roller support like this. A reaction will induce about roller support like this. So only one reaction will induce about roller support. This reaction is always transverse to beam or lateral to beam or perpendicular to longitudinal axis of beam okay so write down now maximum number of unknown reactions maximum number of reaction maximum number of unknown reactions about roller support is one maximum number of unknown reactions about roller support is one okay only one reaction will induce like this First, suppose if this beam wants to displace towards right parallel to length, currently beam is like this. This beam wants to move like this. Roller will not resist. Roller will not resist longitudinal displacement of beam. About roller freely beam may displace parallel to length. You know, in summer, temperature may be more because of more temperature thermal expansion comes in beams right the length of beam may increase and beam tends to move towards right it can freely move towards right on roller similarly in winter season there shall be small temperature because of smaller temperatures the beam may contract in that case beam tends to move towards left or since it is contracting it tends to move towards left so roller will not resist about roller beam can have either rightward displacement or leftward displacement right roller will not resist it okay so maximum number of unknown reactions about roller support or knife edge support is one okay right so let us try to understand two more supports Two more supports so to explain two more supports I am drawing one more beam so this time a beam I am drawing like this right support is fixed support and the left support is guided support left support is guided support so guided support is also called as multiple roller support or sometimes simply it is called as guide, right? Simply it is called as guide. Just copy this. So I may call this as A and I may call this support as B and this beam is carrying number of loads. Maybe this is P1 and this is P2 and there shall be P3, it may carry any number of loads. First you copy this diagram. So from this diagram we are going to understand 
another two supports here first support is guided support so first support is guided support guided support and second support or support b is fixed support fixed support fixed support right so copy this little diagram so from this diagram we are going to learn another two supports support a is guided support support b is fixed support so these two supports we are going to understand and you may maintain some gap here right you have to maintain some gap here don't draw like this keep some gap between end of the beam and end of the guide So A is guided support, B is fixed support. I hope you have drawn. Let us try to understand. First, I take fixed support. So above fixed support, the beam cannot displace either parallel to length or transverse to length. So displacement parallel to length is not possible. Displacement of beam perpendicular to length also not possible. Fixed support resist both displacements displacement parallel to length of beam displacement perpendicular to length of beam not only that man fixed support will resist even rotation of beam a beam wants to rotate fixed support will not allow it try to understand because of force linear displacement will come because of moment rotation come rotational displacement or angular displacement or simply rotation rotation will not you know whenever you apply moment rotation comes whenever you resist rotation resisting moment will develop so here picture support is resisting three displacements displacement parallel to length displacement perpendicular to length of beam and not only these two third it is even resisting rotation also rotation of beam right since it is resisting displacement parallel to length one reactive force will induce parallel to length of beam since it is resisting displacement perpendicular to length there shall be one reaction which may induce perpendicular to length and since it is resisting rotation of beam a reactive moment will induce about support so there shall be three reactions about fixed support right one reaction perpendicular to length of beam another reaction parallel to length of beam and a reactive moment also will induce like this i may call this reactive moment as mb whenever you resist rotation a reactive moment will induce because because of moment we get rotation whenever you resist rotation reactive moment will come right so number of reactions maximum number of reactions about fixed support is 3 okay so right ma'am maximum number of unknown reactions or i should say reactions maximum number of reactions maximum number of reactions about fixed support is maximum number of unknown reactions about fixed support is 3 maximum man always it need not be 3 sometimes 3 sometimes 2 sometimes only one for instance if this beam carries only couple maybe a reactive moment may be there so this reaction may not be there this reaction may not be there like that man right so always it need not be three sometimes three sometimes two sometimes one and if beam doesn't carry any load no reaction like that you can understand right so this is regarding fixed support now let us try to understand guided support or guide in mechanical engineering we call this as guide generally this kind of support is called guided support or multiple roller support your support a is guided support or multiple roller support multiple roller support not single roller many rollers were used like this okay so what this multiple roller support resist if this beam wants to displace 
perpendicular to length of beam these rollers will not allow even single roller will not allow since we are using many rollers definitely they will not allow displacement of beam perpendicular to beam so they resist displacement of beam perpendicular to rollers since they are resisting a reactive force will induce like this right then what about displacement of beam parallel to length currently beam is like this if this beam wants to displace towards left guided support will not resist guided support allow it so here some gap will be left in this gap the beam can displace can expand or contract like that man right so guided support will not resist displacement of beam parallel to beam or parallel to length of beam understand so since it is not resisting displacement parallel to length of beam no reaction will induce parallel to length of beam there shall not be any reaction parallel to length of beam and what about rotation what about rotation so you take one plane like this and you may take another plane like this right two planes between these two planes the beam can have any rotation in simple terminology beam can bend between these two planes a beam bends rotation comes a beam is not bending rotation will not come that is the thing man right between these two planes beam cannot bend that means no rotation will be there so technically rotation means slope no slope will be there between these two planes okay so guided support is resisting rotation of beam about guided support the beam cannot have any slope the beam cannot have any rotation since it is resisting slope a reactive moment will induce okay so a reactive moment may induce like this i may call this reactive moment as ma okay so what is maximum number of reactions about guided support there shall be two reactions one reactive force one reactive moment so write down man right right number of reactions are you may write maximum number of reactions maximum number of reactions about guided support maximum number of reactions maximum number of reactions about guided support is 2 maximum number of reactions about fixed support is 3 maximum number of reactions about guided support is 2 okay so a small conclusion here maximum number of reactions about roller support or knife edge support 1 maximum number of reactions about hinged support or pin joint support 2 maximum number of reactions about guided support or multiple roller support is 2 maximum number of reactions about fixed support is 3 understand so like this we studied four types of supports usually we use only these kind of supports and beams right there shall be many many other kinds of supports but uh, as far as gate is concerned we need not worry about all those things right in gate we are required to know only these four okay so we know types of supports now i am going to define what what is shear force what is bending moment what is shear force diagram what is bending moment diagram why we have to draw shear force diagram why we have to draw bending moment diagram and sign convention of shear force sign convention of bending moment in these lines i am going to proceed now right so first i define what is shear force for defining shear force i am taking a simple beam a simple beam right support is roller support and the left support is hinged support okay hinged support i may call this as a and i may call this as b and this beam is carrying number of loads maybe this is p1 and here there shall be another load maybe p2 here there shall be another load maybe i may call this as p3 and even it may carry some udl the intensity of udl is w and the distance between nda and point load p1 is a like this you know 
Roughly, I have drawn a simple beam for explaining what is shear force, what is bending moment, right? So, all of you please copy. Here, left support is pin jointed support or hinged support. Right support is roller support. In simple beams, usually one support is hinged support. The second support is roller support. Why roller support? To avoid thermal stresses. If it is also pin jointed support, so in summer when temperature is more, beam cannot expand. In winter, for example, when temperature is less, beam cannot contract. So thermal stresses will develop. To avoid thermal stresses, one of these support will be roller support, right? So roughly, you place any number of loads, man, right? I place some uh, four loads on this beam. You can keep any number of loads. It doesn't make any difference, right? No problem. Okay? Now, support reaction about A, support reaction about A is denoted as RA. Support reaction about B is denoted as RB. RA is support reaction about A, RB is support reaction about B. And why horizontal reaction is not inducing here? Because this beam is carrying all transverse loads. Only transverse reaction will induce. If this beam carries any axial load, axial reaction also may induce about hinged support, right? Since this beam is carrying only transverse loads, only transverse reaction will induce. No horizontal reaction, okay? And all of us know this beam is in static equilibrium. The beam is a static structure, right? So beam is always in static equilibrium. So this is in static equilibrium. If this beam is in static equilibrium, every section of beam also will be in static equilibrium. If, if a building is in static equilibrium, every portion of building also will be in static equilibrium. Every wall also will be in static equilibrium. Every column, every beam, every brick, every point, right? So this beam is in static equilibrium and every section of this beam will be also in static equilibrium. Now, I take one plane here, right? I take one plane. I may call this plane as plane XX. And this plane is located at a distance of X from support A. This plane is located at a distance of X from support A. And this plane may divide this beam into two sections, section 1 and section 2. Okay. If entire beam is in static equilibrium, every portion of beam also will be in static equilibrium. That means, you know, section 1 also will be in equilibrium, section 2 also will be in equilibrium. Okay. So here, I want to take equilibrium of section 1. I want to take equilibrium of section 1. Section 2 also you can take. No problem, man, right? Either you can take section 1 or section 2. So here, for my analysis, I am taking equilibrium of section 1. Currently, this section is in static equilibrium. Right section also will be in static equilibrium. Total beam also will be in static equilibrium. Understand? Right. So, what is resultant force about this plane? This section of beam carries two forces. One is RA, other one is P1. So, what is resultant force? So, a resultant force of this much may induce about this uh, plane XX or uh, I write like this. A resultant force of RA minus P1 may induce about this plane. So since this beam is carrying many loads, I assume RA is more than P1. Okay, RA is more than P1. If RA is more than P1, definitely resultant force is RA minus P1. RA is upward, P1 is downward, resultant is difference of these two. So plane XX carries a resultant force of RA minus P1 in upward direction. But this section is in equilibrium. This section of beam is in equilibrium. If this section is in equilibrium, there should not be any resultant force. Right? But we are having some resultant force. 
but resultant force should not be there that means what somebody is balancing this resultant force who is balancing the material of the beam the material of the beam will try to induce an equivalent opposite force to this to balance this force so that this section the entire section may carry zero resultant force or the entire section may be in static equilibrium right so the material of the beam will try to induce a force like this a force like this now tell me what is total force in section 1 you add all the forces you will get zero here right since this section is in equilibrium resultant force should be zero right now it is zero right now it is zero am i applying this man am i applying this force i am not applying this force then who is applying this force material of the beam is trying to resist external load so material of the beam is generating this force it is resisting force and it is being generated by material of the beam to balance all unbalanced forces so that this section may be in static equilibrium okay so this force is called shear force the resisting force offered by beam to balance any unbalanced transverse force is called shear force understand so strictly speaking shear force is not action shear force is reaction from beam you are applying some load beam is reacting that is shear force man so it is resisting force since the action and reaction are equal in doing problems we treat shear force as action actually it is reaction or resistance offered by material of the beam okay so i define the shear force now write down shear force write shear force i am going to define shear force it is the resisting force offered by it is the resisting force it is the resisting force offered by material of the beam it is the resisting force offered by material of the beam to balance to balance any unbalanced transverse force to balance any unbalanced transverse force to balance any unbalanced transverse force so that so that every section of beam so that every section of beam is in equilibrium every section of beam is in equilibrium so this is basic definition of shear force but in most of the textbooks our authors define shear force like this it is sum of all forces either from left or right it is also correct man in textbooks authors define shear force as action here we are defining shear force as reaction always action and reaction are numerically equal so there is nothing wrong in that also right write that definition also textbook definition it is sum of all transverse forces it is sum of it is sum of all transverse forces it is sum of all transverse forces either from left or right either from left or right so this is textbook definition right you know while finding shear force about a point of beam don't proceed from both sides man right you add all the forces either from left or you add all the forces from right not from both sides man if you add forces from both sides the total force will be zero why because beam is static structure total force is always 
zero. So don't add from both sides. Sometimes you may add from left. Sometimes you may add from right. Break only one side. Okay. So actually shear force is resisting force. But in textbooks we define shear force as action a reactive force. Understand? So this is shear force. Now write down man. Bending moment. Bending moment. We are going to define what is bending moment. Bending moment. So if you take moments about this plane, what moments I may get? Two moments I may get. One moment I may get because of Ra. Other moment I may get because of P1. Okay, what is moment because of Ra? Ra into x clockwise. So if you take moments about plane xx, I may get a moment like this. Ra into x clockwise minus P1 into x minus A. Why minus P1 into x minus A? The moment because of P1 is anti-clockwise, moment because of Ra is clockwise. So this is total moment, right? This is the moment about plane xx. But we know section 11 is, section 1 of beam is in equilibrium. Section 2 also is in equilibrium. Every section of beam is in equilibrium. If this section is in equilibrium, there should not be any resultant moment. Resultant force should be zero. Resultant moment also should be zero. But I am getting some moment here. But I know resultant moment should be zero. Then what is the meaning? There is one resultant moment here. But this resultant moment is balanced by an equivalent opposite moment. Which will be induced by again material of the beam. Material of the beam will try to induce an equal and opposite moment to this. So that resultant moment may be zero. So that this section may be in static equilibrium. Understand? So the material of the beam will try to induce an equal and opposite moment like this. Currently resultant moment is clockwise. Resisting moment is opposite anti-clockwise. So this is induced by material of the beam. Now you take moments about plane xx. If you take moment about plane xx, now you can easily understand total moment is zero. Right? Take moments about plane xx, you will easily understand total moment is zero. Since this section of beam is in equilibrium, total moment should be zero man. We all know it should be zero. So this moment I am not applying. This moment is resisting moment offered by beam to balance any unbalanced moment so that every section of beam may be in static equilibrium. This resisting moment is called bending moment. This resisting moment is called bending moment. Understand? Right? So write down definition of bending moment. It is the resisting moment offered by it is the resisting moment offered by it is the resisting moment offered by material of the beam it is the resisting moment offered by material of the beam to balance any unbalanced moment to balance any unbalanced moment to balance any unbalanced moment so that so that Every section of beam so that every section of beam could be in static equilibrium. Every section of beam could be in static equilibrium. Static equilibrium. So this is basic definition of bending moment. And I should say bending moment is reaction, not action. You apply some moment, apply some loads. Bending moment is reaction, man. It is not action. But in our textbooks, our authors define bending moment as action. Since action and reaction are equal and opposite, there is nothing wrong in it, man. In calculations, it doesn't make any difference. But actually, bending moment means reacting moment, resisting moment by material of the pain. So you may write textbook definition also. Right? Textbook definition also. Write down it.
some of all moments some of all moments either from left or right some of all moments either from left or right some of all moments either from left or right this is called bending moment of course the most of the others define bending moment as action but actually it is reaction since action and reaction are equal and opposite it doesn't make much difference man right so this is bending moment it is reaction from material of the pain okay now we understand what is shear force what is bending moment now shear force diagram and bending moment diagram next uh, you may copy you may write shear force diagram shear force diagram shear force diagram sfd shear force diagram. what is shear force diagram everybody knows you know in btec or mtec most of you might have drawn several shear force diagrams shear several bending moment diagrams what is shear force diagram what it shows so write it man what is sfd right sfd like this and write definition it is the diagram in which it is the diagram it is the diagram in which variation of shear force it is the diagram in which variation of shear force is shown along length of beam along length of beam along length of beam along length of beam this is shear force diagram next write down bending moment diagram bending moment diagram it is the diagram in which it is the diagram in which variation of bending moment variation of bending moment is shown variation of bending moment is shown along length of beam along length of beam along length of beam so sfd shows variation of shear force along length of beam bmd shows variation of bending moment along length of beam you know what is sfd what is bmd now a simple question why we should draw sfd and bmd why we have to draw sfd and bmd what is the need of drawing sfd and bmd first let us discuss sfd then bmd why i need to draw sfd by drawing sfd what things we can observe what things we can read right so for example here i am drawing a shear force diagram and a shear force diagram could be something like this right a shear force diagram may be something like this for a particular beam right for a particular beam this is longitudinal axis and right and this is a maybe this is b this is c and this is d and this is e okay what sfd is showing sfd is showing shear force at various points of beam or how shear force is varying two things it is showing man shear force at every point of beam and how it is varying now why we have to draw it obviously we draw shear force diagram to find shearing stresses for example i want to find shearing stress about this point maybe this point is x1 i want to find shearing stress about point x1 so for finding shearing stress first you need to know find shear force at this point we need to know shear force at that particular point man from where i can get the shear force shear force diagram by observing shear force diagram or by reading shear force diagram we can read shear force at various points once we know shear force at various points we can find shearing stress at those points and one more point wherever shear force is more their shearing stress also will be more wherever shear force is more their shearing stress also more 
वाट एवर स्पा क्यारी हईयेस्ट शेर फोर्स देर शेर स्ट्रेस आलो विल हईयेस्ट सो आब्वियली we draw sfd we read sfd for calculation of stress for performing stress analysis of shear stress analysis of shear what is shear stress at various points where it is maximum where it is lowest where it is highest wood span carries highest to shear wood span carries lowest to shear wood span carries zero shear in this diagram which point carries zero shear this point carries zero shear because shear force is zero Shearing stress also will be zero at this point, like that. Okay, so this is S sub D. So by drawing S sub D, we can do all these things. Next, why we have to draw BMD? Why we have to draw BMD? So for explanation, I am drawing two bending moment diagrams, right? Uh, two bending moment diagrams. Maybe this is first diagram. i may call this as a i may call this as b i may call this as c and second bending moment diagram so some bending moment is here it is more than it is constant again it is less then again like this a typically just roughly i am drawing two bending moment diagram this is first bending moment diagram and this is second bending moment diagram i may call this point as a i may call this point as b i may call this point as c i may call this point as t okay so first observe this bending moment diagram by drawing bending moment diagram we can find bending stress at every point of beam for finding bending stress first we require m in previous topic we learned maximum bending stress in beam is equal to m by z m means bending moment all right so for finding bending stress we need bending moment which diagram shows bending moment bending moment diagram bending moment diagram gives bending moment at various points so that you can find bending stress at every point of beam that is one aspect and second aspect by drawing bmd you can locate critical point critical point what is critical point it is the point about which bending moment is highest in beams terminology critical point means it is the point which carries highest bending moment in this diagram what is critical point at which point bending moment is highest obviously point b at point b bending moment is highest b is critical point so wherever bending moment is highest their bending stress also will be highest wherever bending stress is highest their always failure starts for instance if at all any failure comes in this beam about which point failure starts in beams failure always initiates about point which carries highest bending stress which point carries highest bending stress critical point what is critical point in this beam b about b failure may start if point b is safe if critical point is safe the total beam will be safe are you getting my point if at all any failure comes in beam that failure has to be initiated about critical point if nothing is happening about critical point nothing is going to happen to entire beam entire beam will be safe blindly we need not worry about every point of beam in every beam draw bending moment diagram identify location of critical point observe that point if the point is safe the total beam will be safe you need not worry about every point of beam you need not inspect or monitor every point of beam always you have to look you have to keep a look on critical point if critical point is safe nothing is going to happen to entire beam right by drawing bmd you can look at critical point second aspect by drawing bmd you can identify critical span also sometimes not single point man not single point like this many points may carry maximum bending moment in this example span bc carries all points of span bc they are carrying maximum bending moment so 
this the critical span in this beam is called bc what is critical span it is portion of the beam which may carry highest bending moment that is called critical span sometimes only critical point will exist sometimes critical span will exist like this okay so in this beam where failure starts if at all any failure comes where failure starts definitely critical span wherever bending moment is highest their bending stress also will be highest so definitely in span bc failure may start if at all it comes if span bc is safe total beam will be safe in all beams if nothing is happening in critical span nothing is going to happen to entire beam okay so by drawing bmd you can identify location of critical point or location of critical span which portion of beam is critical which portion of beam is safe like that you can identify all these things and at the end of day by using data of bmd you can find bending stress about any point of beam right so this is bmd and this is the main objective behind drawing sfd and bmd right so for all long beams bending moment diagram is more important than shear force diagram in all long beams bending moment is dominant than shear force or i can say like this all long beams fail because of bending moment or bending stress effect of shear force or shearing stress in failure of long beam is nominal or negligible so for long beams you may draw sfd or you may not draw sfd nothing is going to happen man but bmd is compulsory bending moment is very important for long beams sfd is not important you may draw well and good don't draw still well and good nothing is going to happen because of shear force in long beams in gate exam also many questions are coming from bmd as compared to shear force diagram majority of the questions will come from bending moment diagram and very few questions may come from shear force right so you know what is shear force what is bending moment what is sfd what is bmd why we have to draw sfd why we have to draw bmd etc etc so here i want to dictate two points please write those two points first critical point critical point critical point it is the point about which it is the point about which bending moment is maximum it is the point about which bending moment is maximum bending moment is maximum next you write critical span critical span critical span it is portion of the beam it is the portion of the beam it is portion of the beam which carries which carries maximum bending moment which carries maximum bending moment so this is critical span okay right so now we try to understand sign convention of shear force and bending moment right on my of you sign convention sign convention sign convention of shear force and bending moment so here i am taking a portion of beam it's not total beam man right a portion of beam and left of this beam shear force is upward right of the beam shear force is downward left of the beam shear force is upward right of the beam shear force is downward if any section of beam carries shear force like this i assume that section of beam carries positive shear or positive shear force left of the section shear force is upward right of the section shear force is downward if any section of beam carries shear force like this i treat that shear force as positive shear force 
some others may take reverse man it is also okay right some others may take this is negative shear but i take this is positive shear both of us are correct so we generally never worry about shear force man right so shear force may be positive or negative it doesn't make any difference on ultimate effect of beam or try to recall formula of major principal stress maximum shear stress in formula of major principal stress or maximum shear stress tau square will be there tau could be positive or negative tau square is always positive so don't worry much about sign convention of shear force but in our discussion i am going to follow this convention man reverse also correct sometimes in gate exam they may give reverse man they may treat this shear as negative both are okay no problem right so this is sign convention of shear force and if you take moment about center of this section these two forces may constitute a clockwise couple if shear forces on both ends constitute clockwise couple i treat that shear force as positive shear otherwise negative shear okay now bending moment right all sagging moments are treated as positive moments right left of the beam bending moment is clockwise right of the beam bending moment is anti clockwise this moment is treated as positive bending moment and all hogging moments are treated as negative bending moments left of this span anti clockwise right of this span clockwise right so this is negative bending moment this is called sagging moment this is called hogging moment all sagging moments are treated as positive bending moment all hogging moments are treated as negative bending moments or you can understand like this man if uh, moment is clockwise on left if moment is anti clockwise right that section of beam carries positive bending moment if it is reverse left of this section clockwise anti clockwise right of this section clockwise this section of beam may carry negative bending moment like this you can understand man right so left of this section clockwise positive bending moment left of this section anti clockwise negative bending moment or all sagging moments are positive bending moments all hogging moments are negative bending moments how do you understand sagging moment and hogging moment those are defined with respect to topmost layer in this beam what is happening to topmost layer topmost layer is sagging or hogging topmost layer is sagging if topmost layer of beam is sagging or contracting that is called positive bending moment and if topmost layer expands see here man topmost layer is expanding this is called hogging moment sagging means contraction hogging means expansion if topmost layer of beam expands it is hogging moment if topmost layer contracts that is sagging moment all sagging moments are positive all hogging moments are negative like this we define positive bending moment and negative bending moment still many students may get confusion sometimes in an exam they may treat this is negative bending moment this is positive bending moment you cannot do like that man right somehow you have to examine and you have to understand what is bending moment in a particular section compulsorily you have to guess accurately you cannot take reverse man if you take reverse all things will reverse the layer which is supposed to carry positive bending stress it will carry negative bending stress the positive means tensile bending stress negative means compressive bending everything will be reversed that is quite dangerous right so we have to follow proper sign convention with respect to bending moment you can play with sf demon no problem but you cannot play with bending moment diagram still some students may get confusion which is positive bending moment which is negative bending moment to avoid this confusion i may use rain bowl principle rain bowl rain bowl principle rain bowl principle here this beam is bent in the form of ordinary bowl 
this beam is bent in the form of inverted ball this beam is bent in the form of ordinary ball this beam is bent in the form of inverted ball put both the balls in rain which ball will collect water upper ball or bottom ball which ball will collect water obviously upper ball a ball can collect water that section of beam carries positive bending moment a ball cannot collect water that is negative bending moment if any portion of beam bends in the form of ordinary ball like this it carries positive bending moment if any portion of beam carries if any portion of beam bends in the form of inverted ball that is carrying negative bending moment this is called ball principle so you have to follow something man right at the end of day you have to correctly guess the beam is carrying either positive bending moment or negative bending moment correctly how to guess you may follow direction of couple or sagging and hogging or even rain bowl principle if any beam bends in the form of ordinary bowl it carries positive bending moment if any bow, if any beam bends in the form of inverted bowl it carries negative bending moment somehow you have to guess correctly the beam is carrying either positive or negative bending moment you cannot play with bending moment but however we can play with shear force okay so this is regarding sign convention of shear force and bending moment okay so this is end of this session in coming session we are going to understand what is relation between sfd and bmd our shear force and bending moment and how they are related then we do some problems right we do some problems on sfd and bmd okay so this is end of the session until next session have a good day thank you very much